Welcome to St. Leo's Catholic Community and a special welcome to all our guests. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name. Our celebrant is Father Don Berman. Father Mark Marish is concelebrating and Deacon Bill Bukta is assisting. These are our announcements. Confession times remaining are Good Friday from 5 to 7 p.m. and Holy Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon. Father Mark and Father Don will be in the entrances of the gather area. One at a time, stand inside the outer door and celebrate. Remember, social distancing and hygiene as we celebrate the sacrament. For privacy of the confessor, please remain in your car until your turn. Today is the Grand Paschal Fast. It is a time in which the Universal Church is unified in our fasting from food, but also from electronics, radio, television, loud conversations, or other activities that distract us from remembering the death of our Savior. If you can, continue the fast until sunset on Saturday. Thank you for your contributions made to St. Leo's over these past few weeks. Please continue offering your tithe by auto deposits, mail, or delivering to the parish office. Your gift helps us continue to minister in these difficult times. We now begin the Good Friday service in silence. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants, for whom Christ, your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human semblance, his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. For those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe that we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was spurned and avoided by people, a man of suffering accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces spurned and we held him to, in no esteem yet it was what was our infirmities that he bore our sufferings that he endured while we, we thought of him as stricken as one smitted by god and afflicted but he was pierced from our for our offenses crushed for our sins upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole by his stripes we were healed we had all gone astray like sheep each following his own way, but the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. Though he was harshly treated, he submitted and opened not his mouth. 
like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shears. He was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who would, who would have thought any more of his destiny? When, when he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked in a burial place with his evildoers. Though he had done no wrong, nor spoken any falsehood, but the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives us his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his ascendance in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light and fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore, I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked, and he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has sim similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. 
So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears. To the one who was able to save him from death, and he, he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 According to John, when Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered, Judas, his betrayer, also knew this place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen to him, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, whom are you looking for? They said, Jesus, the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fill what he had said. I have not lost any of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its scabbard. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was a father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better for one man should die rather than the people. Simon, Peter, and the other disciples followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid, who was the gatekeeper, said to Peter, You are not one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in the synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather. 
and in secret I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him, bound to Caiaphas the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and immediately a cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus to Caiaphas in the praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not <clears throat> enter the praetorium in order not to be defiled, so they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. <clears throat> the Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone. In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled that he said, indicating the kind of death that he would die. So Pilate went back to the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him. But you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again. Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And Pilate said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this statement, he became even more afraid. <laughs> and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you 
and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For the reason the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then they handed him over to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read the inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be. In order that the passage of scripture might be fulfilled that says, they divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciples there whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. <laughs> After this, aware of everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with a common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop, and they put it into his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers thrust a lance into his side, and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified, and his testimony is true. 
he knows that he is speaking the truth so that you may also come to believe for this happens so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled <clears throat> not a bone of it will be broken and again another passage says they will look upon him whom they have pierced after this joseph of arimathea secretly a disciple of jesus for fear of the jews asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus, and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. <clears throat> Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it in burial cloths, along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now, in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had been buried. So they laid Jesus Christ there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. This is a most unusual Good Friday celebration where normally the church gathers to hear the passion and yet the church is empty. But even in the emptiness of this parish church, we are unified in our faith in God and our belief in the great sacrifice of Jesus on the cross came across an unusual little story that said at the bottom of the pool in the YMCA in Monmouth, Illinois, the builders place a beautiful tile emblem symbolic of the spiritual, the mental, and the physical nature of man. At the center of the emblem is the Bible, opened at John chapter 17, verse 21. When a boy who was standing alongside the pool could not make out the wording, he swam down to the bottom and read it. It says John 17, 21. But what is that? He said to one of the lifeguards standing on the outside. The lifeguard said, that is, they all may be one. The boy replied with prophetic wisdom, you sure have to go through an awful lot to find that out. Swimming all the way to the bottom of the pool, holding your breath to read the passage and then to ask someone or look up the passage, what does the passage say, that they may be one, is an awful lot for a young boy to do in order to find that message. And yet, in some ways, that boy is prophetic because for us to be one, it is our awareness of the crucifixion. It is in the cross that our oneness is verified. The scriptures today give us a reflection upon our Savior Jesus and how he was predicted in the Old Testament from the prophet Isaiah to be the suffering servant. He is the one that exemplifies surrender to the will of the Father in Psalm 31. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. He is the one who experienced temptation, but without sin in Hebrews. He was obedient to the will of the Father to the end. And what we are called to participate in this Good Friday is the oneness of the will of the Father for Jesus and the oneness of the will of the Father for each and every one of us to try to align ourselves with that message. It's an effort. It takes an awful lot of work on our part, an awful lot to go through, as the little boy said about reading the scripture at the bottom of the pool. But yet, our oneness with the Lord is what God desires for us and what we should desire with our God. This year, the COVID-19 pandemic is unifying us in a very strange way. We can't gather on 
these holy days as a parish, as a diocese, as a universal church. We can't even gather as families. And yet we are one in our experience of dealing with this virus. One in striving to live in a way that helps us to not get the virus or to share the virus. Oneness with each other is a unique experience this year. And maybe in some strange, bizarre way, it affirms our desire to be one with the Father through the passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. So as we meditate upon the power of the cross that took the life of our Savior Jesus, may we meditate that it is through the suffering of the servant that we know salvation. May we be one with our Savior in his death so that we may be one with our Savior in union with the Father in salvation. May our meditations this day lead us to a more intimate relationship with the Lord. As the little boy said, it takes an awful lot of effort to figure out that message. May we make the effort necessary to realize and to be open to the will of the Father that says, I love you, I long to be with you, that we may long to be with the Father today and every day unto eternity. We now offer our universal prayers. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that, leading her life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God the Father Almighty. Almighty, ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the work of your mercy, that your church, spread throughout the world, may persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. chose him for the order of bishops, <clears throat> may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by you, their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our Bishop Joseph, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty and ever-living God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for our catechumens, that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their most inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins, through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, 
who make your church ever fruitful with new offspring. Increase the faith and understanding of catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty and ever-living God, who gather what is scattered and keep together what you have gathered, look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism is consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty and ever-living God, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Almighty, ever-living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart they may find the truth, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right with sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Almighty, ever-living God, who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest. Grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you. And so in gladness confess you the one true God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will, for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty and ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the world the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, the freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loose in fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty and ever-living God, comfort the mourners, strength of all who toil. May the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice because in their hour of need your mercy was at hand through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for a swift end to the coronavirus pandemic that afflicts our world, that our God and Father will heal the sick, strengthen those who care for them, and help us all to persevere in faith. Almighty and merciful God, source of all life and health and healing, look with compassion on our world brought low by disease, Protect us in the midst of the grave challenges that assail us. And in your fatherly providence, grant recovery to the stricken, strength to those who care for them, and success to those working to eradicate this scourge. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us adore. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Behold the wood of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us Thank you. 
Normally at this time in the Good Friday Veneration Liturgy is the celebration of communion, bringing forth the Eucharist that was consecrated last night on the Holy Thursday celebration. But today in unity with you in the world who cannot receive, the three of us will not receive as well. The desire of unity with one another, desire of unity of all humanity. This is quite appropriately the one day and tomorrow the second day in which we do not receive the Eucharist. Because if we have just acknowledged Christ died this day, and we are without him, for he is in the tomb. May our oneness in the absence of Jesus in this liturgy continue to unify us in our prayer and thanksgiving for the forgiveness of our sins. Almighty and ever-living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your, of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking of this mystery we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May abundant blessings, O oh Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increased, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us spend this day in prayer and fasting in gratitude for the gift of love that has been bestowed upon our world in the death of Jesus. <laughs>